Hey guys, welcome back to Saucy Sounds. I'm Zach. In today's video, I'm gonna to explain to you why I chose the North Stage 3 as my main keyboard. It's no secret, I absolutely love this board. It's my favorite board of all time that I've ever owned. And in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you why I love it, why I might recommend it to you, and also why I might not recommend it to you. So real quick disclaimer, this is not a comprehensive review. This is just my personal opinions and thoughts and feelings on this keyboard after owning it for about five or six years. And lastly, I am a Nord endorsed artist, but they have no say or influence on this video or my personal thoughts this is completely organic i'm not getting paid for this again i just wanted to share my thoughts and experiences with this keyword with you hope you guys enjoy let's get into it so first thing first is sound right the number one reason why anyone should choose any piece of musical equipment is because you love the sound of it and if it's for any other reason such as looks i'm not hating on it but like at the end of the day it comes down to sound right music is about sound how does it sound um, i absolutely love the sound of this keyboard uh, when i chose this keyboard one of the main reasons or one of the main things i was looking for was a bottom board and I wanted that bottom board to have amazing piano, roads, and a decent sounding organ. And this Nord Stage 3 checks all the boxes, hands down. Um, just listen to this piano sound. All right, absolutely amazing. And so I was convinced like, okay, I've had the Core Kronos, I've had the Yamaha uh, Moex, I've tried the Montage series, I tried the Roland Phantom series. They were all great boards and I liked them for different reasons and I've toured and gigged with all of them. Um, but at the end of the day, for the one that I wanted to purchase and spend my money on, it was a stage three. Um, the sound of the pianos just has a sense of, or like it's just an organic sound and feel to the piano. That I just don't hear it from the other companies. Uh, I grew up in my, um, we had a Yamaha C7. Uh, it's like a seven, nine foot grand. And so I know what a real sound, I know what a real piano sounds like and what it feels like. And the Nord, I don't know what they do with their sampling, but man, like you can actually hear the characteristics of the pianos that they have in their libraries. The uprights are amazing. The grand pianos are amazing. The roads are beyond creamy. Um, and the different styles of roads, what you can do with them as far as the effects, and the organ. Uh, last but not least, organ is really good as well. Uh, is it the best organ ever? No, but it's not supposed to be. It's not an organ keyboard. You have the Nord C2D for that, but this is great to blend in with every other sounds. Great to play in a band function. I mean, I've used it for years and had zero problems with the organ sound. That also leads me to the free sound library. I think it's amazing that Nord has all these sounds that you have access to for life. So I've had this board, I think since 2017, wow, six years now, and I've never once had to pay for an updated sound. So they've added new pianos, new sample synths and all that. Artists like J3PO who make sounds for the keyboard and you can get them at no additional cost. So um, yes, the board is expensive, but once you're in, you're in and it's really cool. And um, yeah, I love the free sound library and I love the fact that I can get new piano samples as they update the technology and their sample techniques and their sound library. The next thing I wanna talk about is the ergonomics. So uh, having a board you know, you got to be able to know your way around the board. You got to feel comfortable. So I had the Core Kronos. I like that board. It had a cool key bed. Um, the sounds are fine. It's just the touchscreen. I thought I'd love it, but I didn't like it. It turns out I'm really a uh, tactile when it comes to my instruments. I prefer to have a hands-on approach. And so with the Nord, every, like, there's no menus. There's no touchscreen because there's no menu. Everything's a button. And that's huge for me. I mean, that is a game changer. So if you want to add a piano sound, you hit a button. If you want to turn on the roads, you hit a button. If you want to add reverb, like everything is just one press away. So there's a there's a crap ton of buttons. And for a lot of people that seems intimidating, but for me, I absolutely love this. And this is a non-negotiable for me. So ever since I got this board, I was like, I can't go back. I want my board to have plenty of buttons. The old school motif used to be like that. And that was a great board. Um, you know, you had that huge category patch bank and everything on the side. Um, but obviously that board has been updated. And they still have all those buttons, but it's just not as much as Nord's, not as many as Nord's. And basically, Nord, out of all the big companies that are making synthesizers and keyboards, they have the most like per function, a button per function on a keyboard. Um, so that was huge. Now that lends itself to the synthesizing, right? So with the onboard synthesizer, 
again, you have buttons per function. It's not all the way there one-to-one, -one, but it's, it's just enough that you can just quickly tweak things without having to go through a menu. Whatever it is you hear in your head, I'm able to just get it out fast using Nord's layout system. So I absolutely love the layout. Plus for me, um, I even think the new Yamaha, I think it's like the YCP3 or whatever, their, their YCB88, their new keyboard stage that came out a couple of years ago actually emulates a lot of the Nord layout. So clearly, it's a preference among a lot of keyboard players. So now, some of the other things I like, just kind of touching more on that ergonomics, is just the simplicity, not only of the layout, but just of the features and how they work. So if I want to program, you know, an automation or they call it morph, I can just hold the button and twist a knob and it's done. So their implementation of simplicity is really top notch. I love the effects section. That's just a simple press of a button. I play guitar as well. So the effects section is basically like a guitar pedal board which I just absolutely love. You know, if I want to turn on reverb, press the on button, just like I would on a guitar pedal. Then I can, like it's literally guitar pedals on the keyboard and I couldn't ask for a better setup. And I love how fast I can tweak and assign effects to the different um, sound uh, engines in the North uh, stage. So kudos to North for that. Uh, their simplicity and execution of um, the sounds and just how you can access and use them, and edit them was really, really well. So it's, uh, ergonomics is definitely like a big piece of why I chose this board. I've kind of went over just to some of the fundamentals of why I chose this board. There are a couple things I don't really like. So one of those things I don't like is the lack of, not polyphony, but the lack of just the amount of sound capabilities, right? So you have two panels, right? And you've got, uh, you can basically double the keyboard. So you've got two organs, two piano, and two synth engines to work with at any given time. And don't get me wrong, it's not bad, but that's something I did miss coming from like a motif or the montage or the core chronos is the ability to just make amazing sounds and layers, right? So like with the chronos, I had like 16 different sounds at once that I could layer and split. With the Nord, you can't do that. So when I bought this board, I understood very much that like, okay, this is just gonna be your bottom board. You will have to get a top board for a synth to fill in the gaps there because there's just not enough power. There's just not enough raw power in this board for whatever reason to be able to do that. Um, I'm not sure why Nord has such an issue or maybe it's a purposeful constraint. You know, maybe that's just kind of maybe their, their philosophy in terms of designing a keyboard as they want to kind of limit to boost creativity. That's my assumption. But yeah, um, technology definitely is capable of a lot of layering and sounds. And so that's something I did miss. I had some, uh, specifically with the synth capabilities, like I had some really cool like pads and keyboard combinations that I can't do on the Nord just because it doesn't have enough firepower. Um, so for that reason, I was like, well, I'm looking more for a dedicated piano rows and organs. So as long as I can do enough on synth, I'll make it and it can and it does. Um, so like I said, I haven't had any issues, but this isn't a board you can buy where it's like one and all. Like you get a Chord Kronos, you don't need another board. You can get a second MIDI controller. Heck, you can get like seven MIDI controllers to hook up a set. Like the Kronos is a beast from a workstation standpoint. And you can just get MIDI controllers to hook up to the keyboard to go ahead and trigger sounds. But like you only need that one board. Whereas with the Nord, you're gonna need another board. You're gonna need a synth. Um, you know, if you're doing more like a traditional gig or if you're doing more of traditional piano playing Rhodes or organ, you'll be fine. But if you're really playing a lot of parts, you're gonna wanna have another board specifically a synthesizer because the nord stage just doesn't have enough firepower with the sound to be able to tackle multitudes of layers and splits now the other thing i kind of touched on it earlier about the storage for some reason nord gives you two gigs now i mean it's 2023 this board came out like 2016 2017 um, that area but i mean two gigs still i mean solid state drives are out so it's not like two gigs is a lot by any measure standard so i don't know why nord limited the onboard memory so much like two gigs is nothing i mean you get thumb drives with like 10 gigs so i really wish nord added more um i don't i don't i don't know why they did that internal hard drives um they're not expensive i, I build computers you know and i also have camera gear that i mess with and all that and Two gigs is very easy to come across. Uh, you can get a two gig SSD at Best Buy for like 150 bucks. So this keyboard is four grand, 4,400 brand new. So I don't understand why you're limited to only two gigs to work with. So you actually can't load up all of the piano samples at uh, Excel quality. You have to compromise and choose like, you know, just a couple that you really like and the rest have to be condensed. And I just don't think that's necessary. I just, you, I mean, I think the core, when I had the Kronos, I mean, man, 
it was like a whole hard drive on the keyboard so i had unlimited storage capacity pretty much and they had like nine grand nine gigabyte piano sounds on there so just don't know what the philosophy is behind that nor if you want to pitch in more than happy to hear and lastly the keypad this is the thing i didn't like about the keyboard is the keypad is pretty weak um, i've broken some of the keys just from playing it i'm not even like a super hard keyboard player so uh the keypad is kind of flimsy now to their credit they came out with an updated version about uh i want to say two years ago um, so they, they, they came out with the new bed, a version two of the bed. So um, kudos to them for fixing that. Again, I got mine in 2017, 2018. So by then, um, you know, it took two, three years later to that key bit came out. So, um, but I actually will be replacing my key bit with that one. I went to a gig once and they had a stage three and they had the new key bit on there. And the first thing I did was like, hey, I know this keyboard is the same, but something feels way different. This is not the same key bit, and it turns out they had replaced it. So um, kudos to them for at least fixing and addressing that issue. The new key bed is way better, uh, a lot more sturdier. It's heavier, so you'll have to build it some more finger strength, but I personally like that because I came from the grand piano background, so I love weighted keys. Um, but yeah. Who is this for? So this keyboard, like I said, is expensive. It's $4,400 US. Um, I got mine B-Stock on Reverb, um, and I recommend that unless you just need it brand new. But um, this keyboard is for, I would say definitely the professional musician or the hobbyist who just has a lot of money laying around. If you're not making money using this board, I think that it might be overkill. Or if you just have money and you just have it to spare, then by all means, and you want the best of the best, grab it. Um, but this keyboard is definitely for the musician who is intermediate to advanced, or you're just a guy that's gigging, or guy or gal that's just gigging and making money from it. Um, if, you, if you're not making money from it, I would think about it, because like I said, it's, it's the price of a car. <laughs> so it's down payment on a house. I mean, $4,400 is a lot of things, and that's the stage three. The new stage four is $5,700. So they only get more expensive. So once again, if you're a professional musician or a YouTuber or influencer or whatever, but you're, this keyboard is bringing in money, different story. But if you're just starting out or if you're an intermediate player, I wouldn't recommend this keyboard as the one to get. It sounds lovely and I think it's worth all the money. But again, I use it every day and it's a part of my business. So it makes sense for me. So I really hope that helps you. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to check out SaucySounds.com where I have free lessons and tutorials for you guys. And I'd love to know your thoughts. And um, maybe if there's any other products you'd like me to review, I'd be more than happy to do it. And I will catch you guys in the next one.